Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. First, I came over here to uh, my 19 pair accounts, right? Um, I always like to see stuff. And, you know, the biggest thing I saw here is I saw, I, I took a look at my 250 super sniper account and I watched it go from 136% to 182. So I hadn't even noticed that yet. I just saw that today. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to take a look at it. You'll see also my 2000 account had nice gains this week. A few accounts had some nice gains, but you'll see my swing account. We had a, we had a stop loss. We lost uh, close to 5%. You can see here um, 107 down to 102, right? Um, and, you know, that was a USD CAD stop loss uh, that we hit. You know, we, we took a, a nice USD CAD stop loss at 500 pips. You can see we hit it. Drawdown did not get any higher than it's been before. Still averaging around the same. Uh, but, you know, occasionally you take losses. We took one here back in February. It had been a while since we took one. And you took a USD CAD one here, you know, took took a little loss. Nothing crazy. Profit factor still great. Um, it's still 181% of trades. Uh, overall, I'm not disappointed. I'm still in profit on the month of July. Not high. Uh, this is the first month uh, where we may have a, you know, a, a pretty close to break even month uh, with Gearbox on this account specifically. Um, but again, you know, earlier entry on swing will get you sometimes. Um, you will get more trades, but sometimes it will take the losses. Uh, but let's take a look at that 250 Super Sniper account. We saw this thing just go and hit it out of the park, right? All of a sudden we had this huge gain this last week. And uh, let's talk about what caused that, right? You know, this... So through time, you can see this account. It's only a $250 account. I mean, there's been a month that didn't make any money. There's been a month that you know, didn't make any money multiple times. Uh, but this last month, uh, it absolutely crushed it. Um, in fact, it's actually in a USD CAD buy uh, right now, which is pretty cool. Sell fell off. It probably closed out some sells. It did. That's where it made all its money here. You can see just on uh, USD CAD, look at these trades it had closed out. It had closed out these buys. And then it re-entered cells. And I mean, it just, it, it crushed it on USD CAD. Let's be honest. This super sniper account, oops, um, just USD CAD and it were friends this week. Uh, and it had a lot of success from that. It ended up, you know, doing close to 19% this month, um, which was about 59 euros. Um, pretty, uh, pretty incredible as this account is in euros, by the way. But, you know, the point is to show you that, hey, this account's been running since August. It is about to be August here. We have a one-year account running on $250 that did not blow, that's withdrawn all its initial investment, that is, you know, just doing its thing. And I love to show this because there's not many products out there in the market that can trade on small money. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not making the monthly fee that it costs to use the software, but does Gearbox use proper risk management? Can Gearbox work on small accounts? Yes, and yes, and yes. And that's a big thing for me because I know that if I can make it work on a $250 account, you're going to trust it with $100,000? You're going to trust it with a million dollars? I am because it didn't blow $250, right? So um, you got you to gotta come in and look at that kind of stuff. So uh, as you know, we, we've been crushing it. There's, uh, you know, we, we've had some great results with these accounts. They all had some gains. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, even our little uh, five hundred dollar sniper, it hasn't it hasn't closed anything since June twenty second. So um, let's get into the one pair data. So we're gonna go into the one pair data as always. Um, I told you there's a few pairs to ignore as we're waiting on them to take new trades. So the data is inaccurate. GBP JPY ignore the data here. GBP CHF ignore the data here. Uh, and uh, USD CAD uh, or what is this one? AUD CAD. Um, you can ignore the data there as well until we actually, now I have to actually, I can op optimize this one. It finally took a trade. Okay, cool. AUD CAD, we're going to optimize. I'm actually going to do that one in front of you guys. Let's go take a look at it. AUD CAD, where uh, that'll be. Perfect. Um, hold on. I'm going to show you guys how we're going to modify this to only show 
since Gearbox. Actually, I think this is only since Gearbox. Yeah, this is actually only Gearbox. Uh, AD CAD, AD USD. Okay, so there we go. We switched it to AD CAD as of. Yeah, so I need to update it now. Okay, now done custom analysis. I'll teach you guys how we do this. So this account was Gearbox, but not on a UDCAD originally. Uh, so July, 2021, we're gonna sort since it took that trade, we'll just say since the 18th to now, we'll pin this, analyze. And there we go. Now this is actually accurate on a UDCAD. Um, sometimes you gotta wait for them to take their trades, right? Um, so cool, let's do absolute gain and let's take a look at the results. So as you guys can see, these accounts are crushing it. Um, these are the data points on these accounts. Now we are gonna go ahead and we are going to take a look into these accounts one by one. We're gonna scroll through the VPSs. I just wanted to pull up this chart first and show you guys this data so that you guys have it. And let's get right into the VPSs and talk about each of them. So we'll start here on Cloud Trader 1. Uh, as you can see, GBPCHF still has not taken a trade. Um, we have 2.45% this week on NZD CAD, uh, on the swing account. Absolutely incredible. Uh, we'll go over here. This is our 19 pair accounts. You'll see this account was the one I hit a stop loss in. We're about 10% drawdown. We got some USD CAD trades open, a GBP AUD and some AUD NZD trades. So we're going to go through a bunch of these accounts right now. We're going to take a look. You'll see this swing account. Uh, this week did 4.43%. It's in no open trades right now. Or this is a sniper account. Yes, sniper account. 4% this week, no open trades. I'm just pulling up the account numbers so I know which one we're walking into here. This was the $250 account that, as you saw, is up 20% this week, and it's in floating profit right now. Um, the proof's in the pudding, right? 20% right there. Uh, a little small account, but it's running. It's doing what it does. Uh, you can see here's the $655 account. It's in some trades. It's in a Euro USD and an AUD NZD. Uh, it's in some drawdown on the week, you know, just waiting on some trades to swing, but it did take some trades. Uh, coming into here, here is our swing account. And uh, it is in some DD right now. It closed out some trades this week, but, you know, it's in some new ones. This account is in a small little drawdown. This account is in floating profit right now. I can physically close every single one of these trades out if I wanted to. And uh, we are in 2% floating profit. Um, you know, looking at USD CAD, uh, I'm going to be honest here. Um, anytime I see really good floating profit positions like this, I'm going to kind of take a look at where the TP is, where we actually are in the market. And, you know, this thing is still looking to go for a large amount of pips, right? It's still looking to, in fact, we're gonna pull up the chart. Let's go to the USD CAD on here. Uh, 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 USD CAD, where are you hiding? There you are. All right, let's take a look here. Um, you can see we're pretty close to get into that TP, but you know, for me, uh, this is one of those situations where I'm just gonna close the trades. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. You know, there's times where um, I'm not going to close them all. These two are pretty much break even. I'm going to let those keep playing. But for USD CAD, I've had enough. I'm going to take my profit off the table. Let's just go ahead and uh, let's close them out, right? So sometimes I do this. And the reason I show you this on a call is, hey, look at that. I just took 1.76% profit on the week. Can you complain about that? I can't complain about that. So we're out of there. We, uh, we took our profit and we ran. Um, so we'll come back in here. We'll see this account. It's in a little DD. No worries. Um, you know, just doing its thing, playing out some trades. As well, this account just in a little DD as well, playing out some trades. Same thing, GBP AED and Euro USD uh, and GBP CAD. Some good trades. Definitely some great trades to play out. I'm excited to see the end results in some of these ones. Um, as uh, to, uh, to, 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 to. 
Uh, great question here I see from Ryan, and uh, I'm going to answer this for you, Ryan. Uh, he said, question for you, Mike. Gearbox had three EuroCAD sell positions, which hit TP earlier this week, which is great. But then right as those trades closed, Gearbox proceeded to open two buy positions. Um, well, I'm going to tell you why that happened, Ryan. If you actually look at the prices in which those two, two EuroCAD uh, positions opened, uh, they should have different prices open, meaning that uh, if the market was to have a quick spike, it may have hit both of your entries at the same time, right? You may have taken your entry here and the market went, Shh, and now you took your next entry right away. So it, it's not a matter of, did they open at the same time? It's a matter of, did they open at the different prices as they were supposed to? Um, and that's what you need to look at, Ryan. So as long as they opened at the prices as they were supposed to, it does not matter, right? It did exactly what it's supposed to do for you. So that's what I'd take a look at. If less, unless the prices it opened are the exact same, then there's nothing abnormal, Ryan. It did exactly what it would have done. Um, you know, the market went to your TP and kept going and then Gearbox was hedging in the ghost gears and then it saw an opportunity to play the market back down, right? So your sell positions hit TP, now it's in buys, right? Um, so same, same concept there. That's exactly what would happen. Uh, let's keep going through the one pair data accounts here. Uh, do, do, do. All right. Look at this, Euro NZD. I've been talking a lot about Euro NZD recently. Um, I'm a big fan, huge fan of Euro NZD. This last month, Euro NZD by itself. All right. I'm going to, I'm actually going to pull up the MyFX book on this so we can talk about this. Euro NZD by itself. All right. If we go in here. Where are you hiding on me, Euro NZD? You're hiding somewhere. And I'm going to find you. There it is. Take a look at this. I started this account. It'll be uh, two months, right? Uh, in a, about a week. And uh, this thing would have paid a monthly fee by itself. This one pair by itself would have paid somebody's subscription. So on 77% of trades, eight profit factor. It's been crushing it. Um, Euro NZD, just an incredible pair. I would highly recommend adding it to your setup. I'm going to add it to my 19 pair accounts, bring them back up to 20 pairs running. And uh, I, I just, I think it's a great pair. And I've been seeing the results from many of my customers with it. And, uh, you know, it, it respects the swing strategy and sniper strategy very well. So uh, definitely recommend Euro NZD as a pair to add to the mix um let's go back to what we were doing here and talking about these vpss uh all right so your nzd 2.83 percent this week incredible uh here we are aud cad 1.26 percent this week and in floating profit right now um that could be closed out pretty awesome working towards getting to that tp right going to euro gbp we got nothing this week NZD CHF, 1% on the week. Awesome. NZD JPY, 1.3% on the week. Coming over here to NZD USD, we got nothing. USD CAD, 6.34% on the week out of all trades on this swing account. Coming over here, GBP AUD, we are in the trade still. GBP CAD, we did not take a trade on this account. We have some trades in GBP CAD on other accounts, as we noted, but this swing account did not take one. GBP JPY did not take one. GBP NZD did not take a trade this week. GBP USD did take trades and is currently in 1% floating profit. Incredible. Coming into Euro JPY, we got nothing on this week. All right, Euro AUD, we got nothing on this week. Euro USD, we are in some drawdown. We are playing out this buy position. As you can see, nothing crazy, but we are definitely in a little drawdown on this small little $500 account on Euro USD. Euro CAD up, hold on, that's not what we wanna look at. Euro CAD, wow, 4.49% this week on Euro CAD. Uh, absolutely incredible. This account was in some drawdown for a long time. Uh, and finally came out of it. Uh, I know many of you made some great money when EuroCAD swung. Many of you were in those trades. Uh, Euro CHF, we got nothing on the week. 
USDCHF 1.12% this week. AUD USD, we did not take a trade. CAD CHF 1.16% on the week. CHF JPY, a little 0.5 percenter there. And what do you know? CAD JPY 1.31% on the week. It's been a great week for Gearbox uh, all around. I think many people are very happy. AUD JPY 1.55%. AUD NZD, a little drawdown in those trades. AUD CHF, we got nothing here. And uh, oh, we can ignore that account. That's not a one pair data account. And that is the end of our data account. So uh, with that being said, you know, a lot of great results this week. Um, and, you know, and, and then really some great results. Uh, to, to, to Ryan, go ahead uh, and, and submit a support ticket and uh, address Tyler, uh, say need to show to tech team and Tyler, and I'll take a look at it today and see what I can find there. But with that being said, you know, it was an incredible week for Gearbox. Let's take a look at what's going on this upcoming week and uh, get right into it here. All right. So Tuesday, we got some consumer confidence, uh, USD red folder event. We got AUD red folders, CAD red folder on Wednesday, more USD FOMC on Wednesday, uh, GDP on Thursday. Uh, and uh, what do you know? We got GDP and core PCE. So we definitely got some red folders this week. A lot of USD, a little bit of Canadian, definitely some AUD. Um, you know, nothing too crazy, but I think that this will be a great week for precision modes. Intraday mode, since we are primarily trading Canadian USD and Euro pairs. Um, on the intraday side, I'm going to be a little more cautious on the precision mode side, nothing abnormal, all uh, all uh, horses ahead, right? So, with that being said, um Great question, Sadu. What happens if I only close the trades in profit, not the whole trade? Terrible idea. Don't do that. That's how you're going to lose money. You only close trades if you close the whole sequence. If you do anything other than that, do not call me when you lose all your money. All right? That's, that's my best piece of advice for you. You close a whole sequence. You don't just close one trade in the sequence that's in profit. If you do that, you're going to find yourself in drawdown forever and eventually blowing that account. So make sure if you're closing trades manually, you're closing the whole sequence that corresponds to that currency pair. Do not just close the one profitable trade and leave the three negative or two negative open on that currency pair. That is just a recipe for disaster. Do not do it. Thank you for that question. And I'm glad that we could address that right now because um, that is a very important topic. So great question, Sadu. Uh, let me take a look at the chat here. Uh, uh, Govind, hi, I'm facing issue of trades not opening up, though I have set up five max pairs. Um, well, yeah, if you're a brand new person, Govind, then, you know, USDCHF might have been the only pair you opened this week. Even though I'm showing profit on tons of other pairs, those are trades that could have been opened two, three weeks ago that just closed. And that's why you're seeing profit as I'm showing, right? So if you're brand new and this week you only had USDCHF open, hey, that might have been exactly what actually happened for you. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, I would definitely, uh, re look at your setup though, and, uh, you know, make sure everything's perfectly in running. Um, you know, that that's the one thing I would double check, make sure all the smiley faces are in the right hand corner and that you see trading on the UI of every currency pair. With that being said, I'm looking to see if we got any more questions here. Uh, yes, Govind, if you reset and reapplied Gearbox, it will count the levels again and take time to start new trades. It's best that you do your setup at the beginning of market open and you do not touch it again until market close a week later. So when you're using precision modes, you do your setup and you should not 
typically make any changes midweek with precision modes. With intraday modes, you can do that because you're more hands-on. It doesn't have to count as many levels. You can make a lot more modifications. That's why intraday is a more hands-on strategy. But with precision modes, you really set it at the beginning of the week and you don't look at it or make any modifications. Uh, well, not proper, you look at it. You don't make any modifications until the next week. Um, so that's the best way. If you're interfering with precision modes and making constant changes, you will limit your trades and your trade opportunities. With that being said, though, again, a great week. It looks like ahead for precision modes. I'm uh, hoping we get many amazing new trades and that these red folder news events uh, do exactly what they always do with Gearbox and, and, and play into our long term profitability favors. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and by the way, uh, look forward. I know last week I told you Gearbox 1.01 should be rolling out. Uh, we did some last-minute testing, and uh, we had to do some more tweaks, and uh, I'm pretty positive, about 98.5%. I got a few more things I got to do today just to do my final checklist. A pretty positive 1.01 should be rolling out for this weekend and the market uh, week ahead. So get excited about that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, everybody.